We're going to start in a slow back pedal with all of it. Okay, now when I pull the ball up, now we're going to go to a faster back pedal and we need to all say pass. And now when I bring the ball here, it's going to be a ball call for us. But what that's sig significant in is that that receiver has broken my cushion and now when I open, and I think it's really important how you coach that open step, I've got to be able to throw my elbow down into the ground because as soon as I throw my elbow up in the air, what happens to my pads? I get high with everything and now if my pads are high, I can't do what I've got to get done. But as I'm going now, if I'll throw that elbow into the ground, it's really going to allow me to open and cut off that route of that wide receiver. So we'll do that going down that way. Again, making the kids talk as much as you can, making them give a pass, making them give a ball call with all of it. We'll do that and then I'll go down at that end and we'll work back with it. The next thing we're going to do are what we call 45 ISOs with it. Okay, again, we're all going to be five yards apart. I'm going to start you in a slow back pedal initially, but then I'm going to drop you and I'll tell them which direction we're going. It's like I am a flat defender. I'm a force player. I'm a strong safety or a weak safety playing sky coverage with it now. Okay, I'm starting in a back pedal. Okay, I'm opening now. And I'm running at a 45 as fast and as hard as I can until that quarterback sets up. When that quarterback sets up, I want to be able to square myself back up and give a ball call, and now I'm going to break you to your left. Again, I'm opening, running as fast and as hard as I can. Now I'm going to set up. Okay, I'm not drifting. I'm just setting up. And then I'm going back to my right one more time, and then on the third one, I'm going to pull the ball over my head. It's like a receiver's made a double move on me now. He's run a post. I open myself up to the post, and now he's come back to the corner. I've got to stick that outside foot in the ground, throw that elbow back, which is going to bring my eyes back around where I find that wide receiver. Okay, so we call those 45 ISOs. We'll do that down, and then we'll come back with it. Okay, again, how does that carry over onto the football field? It's going to carry over for me as a flat defender. It's going to carry over for me of setting up and breaking on the hand. It's going to carry over for me of now some kind of a double move where, again, I've got to whip myself back around and go play. The next thing we're going to get into is what we call down the line. Okay, we talk about riding the bike. Everybody's ridden a bike in their life, and those pedals on a bike, they never get wide. My pedals are always here, and now I'm driving with it. So again, we're going to start in a slow back pedal, and I'm either going to drive them downhill to their right or to their left. But again, the same things that we wanted to see going back to the Colorado circuit and everything, my chin's always over my knees. Okay? We do it on the line, so when we tape it and when we watch practice, my feet aren't ever getting wide with it. They're no wider than that chalk line with it. But when I come downhill, I'm really throwing those hammers and I'm driving as fast and as hard as I can. I'm trying to explode and come forward out of my break. We'll do that one time to the right, and then we'll do that one time to the left with everything. Okay, the next thing we'll do, I need two of you here, it's going to be rugby drill for us. Okay, we're going to stand about a yard and a half apart and about a yard and a half from me with everything. I'm starting you in a slow back pedal right now. Okay, now I'm going to drive you downhill at a 45 degree angle. Same thing we just did right there, but now there's competition with it. Okay, I can see why a guy beat me, okay, and we're driving. And what we always talk about, you're the guy that's coming to pick the football. It's a chance for us to go get it. I'm tossing the football up now. I expect the inside guy to drive and go pick the football and then always flip it to his partner. I don't want to cheat my partner with it. We'll do that either direction. The next thing we'll do, I just need one guy standing here. Okay, and it's going to be a W drill for us. And what we're going to do in a W drill, you're cocked in at a 45 degree angle at us right now. I'm taking you back in a slow back pedal. Now I'm driving you forward. But what I want to see instead of coming back downhill forward, I want to see me get my hips open and driving back at a 45 this way with it. And again, what is the communication? It's pass, it's ball. It's pass, it's ball. And then on the second one, I'm going to end up throwing the football to him. Again, we're not really concerned about how fast I go backwards. The slower the better for me. But when I come forward, there's got to be a sense of urgency and there's got to be a great break with it. The next thing we'll do is with two guys out here, still cocked in facing me, this is what we call quick drops with it. Okay, I'm telling them it's a pass right now. They're both playing a uh, force technique. So I'm dropping to the flat with it. Right now I'm telling it's pass. I'm open and I'm running to the flat. Now I'm going to set up. Okay, and now I'm going to break off of the hand this way or off of the hand this way. Again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to work the top of the route combination now by taking my eyes here and the quarterback set up 
and now what's happening for me? Now I've got to break on that quarterback's hand wherever it's happening. So we're not running a thousand yards with all of it and we're getting a lot of quick repetitions on things that are really important for us to go in and play in coverage with it. We'll do that either way as it all happens. Uh, those are really the base footwork stuff that we'll get done in a short period of time. The next thing that we're going to do, I need a couple more guys out here. Actually, give me a guy that can be a quarterback, and I need a strong safety, a free safety, and a weak safety. You don't want to be my quarterback? Oh, goodness gracious. You want to be the quarterback? Okay, stand back there, and, and Jim, go be our running back, please, real quick. Okay, we'll be under center with it. These are two tight ends right now. Be my strong safety, give me a free safety right here, and give me a weak safety over here. All right, you're going to be my free. Okay, the first thing we're going to start in robber coverage. So it's a pro set, so I'm a seven by three alignment. You're on the read side guard, eight to ten yards deep. Okay, I'm going to put a cone right here. Okay, you're cocked in at a 45 degree angle. We're going to play it as a quarter concept on the back side. So I'm going to start myself at three by ten, but I'm going to cheat myself down to where I'm six yards with all of it. Jim, you deepen up and you're the running back. Stay right there, quarterback. All right, now I'm going to teach all of the leverages that happen with it. Okay, if I get a zone play starting to me on this side, what does it look like for me? This tight end now, he's blocking down on the defensive end. Okay, there goes the quarterback here. As I'm this backside weak safety, I know the play's starting to go away. I'm starting to become a shuffle player, and right now I know I can get the cut back if they hand the ball off to the back. And he cuts all the way back outside the tight end. Now I'm going to fit myself up with all of it. I'm the strong safety, action started going that way. Initially I'm shuffling, but as that cutback comes back, now I'm pressing, running the banana inside out with everything. I'm the strong safety, as that action comes to me, I know I'm the force player, I'm starting to go attack that thing, and this is how we're gonna teach them leverage. Okay, now, let's say they kept the zone play to the read side with all of it now. Same thing, you're gonna block the defensive end, you're gonna work yourself up and try to cut off the backside safety here. Run the stretch over here. Red 88, red 88, set, go. Okay, here he goes with all of it now. Again, strong safety starting to come down and be a force player with it. If I'm the free safety, how you really try to train a young free safety is this. I'm going to put a cone right there where that Dr. Pepper bottle is. Action's coming to him. He starts to shuffle. I want to really see him push downhill at this angle where we get good at coming inside out and running the banana with the deal. What I don't ever want to do, I don't want to see that guy where he stays square and stays head up with that ball carrier and now he's got a two-way go with all of it. Okay? That's how we start teaching leverage with it. The other thing we can get into now, we can put a fullback back here and now we can start teaching them how we want to play the toss, how we want to play the power, and everything that happens with it. Okay? So now as I'm coming off the edge, here comes everything. We're running the power play over here. That strong safety again. How do I fit it up? How am I being a contained player here and constricting this running lane as far as I can with everything? All right? That's that. Now we're going to go back to a one-back deal for a second. So what we've seen, we've seen them run the stretch, okay, either side with it, Okay, we've seen them run zone cut back, and now what else can we get out of it? We can also get the boot out of it. So now in the boot, we're starting the zone play here, we're going back this way, you're dragging across the field at six, hold on, you're going to block down 1,001 and then you're going to the flat with it. So here we go, red 88, red 88, set, hit. Now here we go. Again, free safety, what happened to me? I got zone play to me initially, all right, I'm starting to shuffle. I snap my eyes when I see Boot to my vertical. He's dragging across the field. I'm driving down and I'm covering him. Biggest thing for us now, I want to get my head in front of that tight end and I want to cut off the route. Okay, again, I'm the weak safety. As that play went away from me, I started to shuffle. But I know when play goes away, I can get the cut back or I can get the Boot coming back out of it. My vertical ran sideways. I'm driving down and I'm covering it. Again, strong safety. Who becomes swing deep at number three now? That's what I'm thinking with it. Okay, so we work the boot that way. Now, let's work the boot back this way. We're starting action here, going here, you're coming across at six. Uh, block down and run to the flat for us this time. Red 88, red 88, set, hit. Okay, again, where's my vertical at now? There he went, right? Okay, again, what's the quarterback doing? Play action, running sideways, it's a boot. My vertical's running sideways. I'm driving down and I'm covering it. Okay, free safety, what happened to you? Action started going away from me. I snapped my eyes back to my vertical. He ran out. 
I know the strong safety's playing it. So what I can do now, I can look back and help with this crossing route coming. Okay? When I can't do that is this. Everybody go back. Go ahead and you drag your cross now at six. You go vertical. Still going to run the boot this way. Red 88, red 88, sit, hit. Okay, again, where's my vertical at now? I'm the free safety. I took my eyes back to my vertical. He's running down the field vertical. I've got to end up playing it now. Okay? Doesn't matter if that is a tight end or that's a wide receiver with all of it. Okay? That becomes what we can teach out of that. I said we also teach smokes out of that. So now let's say we've got double smoke going. That's the strong safety, and this is the weak safety over here with it. Where's my aiming point on a smoke? My aiming point is two yards outside of that deepest back. I want to show a good zone coverage alignment, but I want to cheat down the line of scrimmage, and when that ball snapped, let's say y'all start running the zone play that way, and you're going to cut it back. Red 88, red 88, set, hit. I'm coming here right now. Hey, I see it going away. I'm going to choke my motor down, and I'm going to be patient until I see what's happening with it now. If they hand off the zone and he cuts it back, I'm going to fold and tackle the cut back. If the quarterback keeps it on the boot, I'm going to get myself up the field and go play the boot off the quarterback with it. If I'm on the smoke on that, actually just run it this direction and I'll show you. Red 88, red 88, set, hit. That back now stepped to me on any kind of a zone path, I'm going to go tackle him. And I'm taking it away as we go. Okay? Other things we can get into, we can get into running the option with it. Okay, now. The next thing we'll do with that, go to shotgun, back can offset either side. Okay, now how have my aiming points changed? If I'm the safety on that side, I'm still two yards outside of the deepest back. If I'm the safety on this side, I'm still two yards outside of what is the quarterback now. But I know as I'm coming from this side, I'm the guy that can have the zone fake to me. So if they're running the read zone across, there's my back. No different than him being under center and stepping to me, I've got to end up flattening and tackling him with it. Okay? I know on any kind of zone read, when they're going away from me and I'm coming off the edge, it's going to make me the quarterback player with all of it. Now we can get into sprinting out and again, speed option with all of that stuff. But again, by having four guys, I can get a great look of exactly everything that's happening for us schematically of, of what we've got to get a whole bunch of reps of. Uh, let's talk about playing robber coverage for a second. The first thing we're going to do, be my number two receiver out here, stand right there, quarterback. Back, come to this side for a second. Wide out your wide out out here with it now. Okay, we talked about our alignment versus twins. Man, I'm going to split the difference between the offensive tackle and the number two receiver. That's my alignment. What's my stance? My shoulders are square with my outside foot back. What's my key? I'm a ball key. Okay, a couple of things are going to happen for us. Everything I do, I'm going to put a play action with right now because that's the hardest thing to train your eyes to do is go play play action. So every time the quarterback is faking it, sometimes I'll tell him to give it, okay, or sometimes I'll tell him to fake it and we're running the number two vertical with it right now, okay? So as it's happening, I'm sitting here and it's don't go until you know. Back steps down, he hands the football off to him, I now am showing myself up with it, okay? If pass shows, Soon as pass shows, I'm opening my hips and taking my eyes to number two. If he runs an outside route underneath eight yards, I'm giving a wheel call, Robin Curl to post of one. If he pushes two eight yards, now I'm driving and I'm playing it. And again, the biggest coaching point in that technique is making sure once I get my hips open, I'm getting my shuffle steps in. Can't be a crossover. Because a crossover again, what's that guy gonna do? He's gonna attack my butt with all of it. If I'll get my shuffle steps in and I'll be able to see his hips, I can play everything I've got to play. If he starts running a dig route now, I'm sticking and I'm driving and I'm cutting that route back off. Again, take away those routes between 7 and 12 to 14 yards with all of it. Okay? That's really robber drill with it. And then we'll get into all of the half zone stuff and everything that we talked about that way with it. As far as teaching man coverage, I'm going to start 5 yards off of him. My outside foot's always going to be back and I'm playing on his inside eye. It's going to be the same thing we worked on that open step. If this guy's running a vertical route, I'm slow, I'm slow, I'm slow. If he pushes away from me, I've got to continue to widen to him to maintain my leverage. Okay? But as he, he's here, once he breaks my cushion, it's going to be that same open step, and I've got to open and be able to cut off his route with it. Okay? If he pushes inside leverage at me, I'm staying inside with all of it. Okay? Again, anticipating some kind of an outside route coming back out of it. 
Again, patience and hard focus are going to be those words that we talk about with everything there. Then we'll get into setting up two receiver routes, or now we can start playing combination routes with all of it. But that's really pretty much what we do from a... Uh, does everybody remember X-Drill? How we did that deal? We're going to do one other drill that we call Etchy Sketchy. And Jim, come up here for just a second. It's going to be one guy at a time. And what we're going to do, we're going to get our feet going. Okay? We're going to be in a back pedal. We're driving forward. Okay? We're going to be in a back pedal. We're here. Now I'm going to open you at a 45, but what do I do when I change directions? I touch the ground, don't I? Okay? I'm touching the ground and I'm running at a 45. Okay? I'm sticking and I'm coming straight forward. Yep. Here. Touch the ground. There you go. I'm here. I'm back. I'm forward. This becomes really a big conditioning deal for us. And again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get our hips down. Force them to touch the ground where I learn to play with my hips in a lower position with all of it. Okay, and we call that etchy sketchy, and that's one that'll get after them pretty good. Remember those old etchy sketchies where you got to do all that stuff? Kind of fun with everything. But that's kind of us and how we do things. And does anybody have any questions over anything? How much tackling you do? How do you tackle legs? Okay, we don't have a pop up dumb or one of those step over dummies, but what I'm going to do, if Jim is tackling right now, okay, I, I, and I do this, I hold the bag for him. Okay, we've got one of those stand-up square step-over dummies that I'm running right here at him. Now, whenever I break, instead of running downhill or instead of running at a 90-degree angle, I'm going to run away from it. Again, why do I want to do that? Because as Jim's running through here, I want to force him to have to run through that. Okay, again, don't run flat, don't run downhill. What's the hardest thing on him that forces him to have to run through all of it? And as they go, I make him run through the bottom of that deal and wrap up with it. That's how we teach that. What else we got? Uh, who are your linebackers? They're, they're a back key. They reach back. Yep. So, but you give them a pull call. They're, they're reading back, seeing through linemen. How far do they slant your, uh, your front people? We are slanting a technique as a general rule. Are they reading the down linemen as they're slanting? Yes. I'm reading the adjacent lineman as it's all coming to me. And I've got to do a good job of being able to redirect if I'm slanting and everybody's zoning this way, of sinking myself and getting back in that gap where I don't get too gapped with it. On the leg tackle, do you want them to keep their head up? Oh, yeah. Yep, and I want to run through it. I don't want to stop, and I don't want to just dive at them. I want to be able to go run through their ankles with it. Yep, because again, if, if, if my feet stop when I dive, there's always a chance that he can push off of me and continue to go. But if I'm here and I've got my eyes up and I'm running through his ankles right now. What's the ankle for? His freaking ankles. Mm. If we're going to do that, the biggest thing I'll do, give me two guys right here. Y'all are both facing down the field this way with it. Okay, you're running down the field. I'm on defense right now, okay? And I'll say go, and y'all both start running down the field. And now I'm going to throw the football up in the air and I'm going to give a ball call. Okay, if I'm in dominant position, I'm looking here initially. And now if I see the ball's underthrown, I'm going to come myself back and go up and get that rebound like we talked about. If it's thrown to his outside shoulder, I've got to stay in dominant position and continue to fight. Okay, what I can't do initially, I can't zone turn that thing because as soon as that happens, he's pushing off on me and there's separation that's created with it now. That's one of the biggest deals to do that. And again, that's something I think you can do during the off season. We can't use footballs when we do it, but we can use tennis balls or we can use towels that we've taped up to look like a football with everything and do that. Uh, I, there's another good drill that I kind of like doing when we're in three lines with everything. Again, telling them the football is on your right-hand side now. Okay, I'm the quarterback here, and I'm telling you all that pass is shown. It's really talking to weak safeties and free safeties with it, and we tell them it's pass right now. So I go ahead and I've got my hips open and I'm playing a shuffle. I'm going to shuffle, shuffle, and then I'm coming here where we're breaking downhill with all of it. Okay, again, it's a shuffle, shuffle, but now I want to see that drive coming from there with everything. If you're in a trail position, how do you, when we're in a trail position here instead of a position, how do you teach them to attack? <laughs> we pray. <laughs> no, the biggest deal for us is we want to be able to play the hands with it. 
Okay? And whenever a receiver is going to go up and catch the football, his hands are going to go up and his eyes are going to get thick. Okay? If he's running his route and he's a wide receiver running like this and the ball's not coming, he's got problems. But as he's coming here, is here his eyes get big and his hands go up. I would, in a perfect world, if I could always shoot for that upfield hand, then he's not going to have a chance to catch the football as I come through and as I play it. But if I'm beat, I've got to go finish is the biggest deal for us. For the most part, yeah. Yeah, but it's all, we do it more as a safety deal just because we're in that space more than anything. What do you do on the goal line? Uh, depending on what personnel groupings they're in. If they're getting in big personnel groupings, we'll basically play a double eagle and take both corners out. Bring in another strong safety with it. Uh, one of the biggest deals we're going to do down on the goal line in the red zone, you heard me talk about on Thursdays, we're going to go down there and practice. The other thing we're going to do on Wednesday is we're going to take their 12 to 15 best plays and we're going to go down there and we're going to run them during practice. Again, so much of what we do down there is going to be recognition for our guys and what we have to stop with everything from that standpoint. And again, trying to get them where they understand what the offense is trying to do. We're not ever going to line up in the end zone down there. I think that's one of our biggest coaching points with it. How about coverage? Depends, you know. I mean, are we better at playing man coverage? Are we better playing zone coverage? Are we better playing sticks? Or what do we have to do to stop what they're doing? Where are we at in the game, you know? I mean, what's the... Do we have to have something that goes and stops them right now or, or whatever it is? How, how much do we want to try to hold them to a field goal with it? More than third and ten. More than third and ten and you're playing stick coverage. How, how deep is your being covered? They're never deeper than ten yards. And if it's less than third and ten they're, or third and ten or less, they're always one yard in front of the sticks. And we deepen those half players up so they are between 12 and 14 regularly. They're 17 to 19 in sticks, and they're not in a hurry to go anywhere. Nope. Anybody else got anything? All right. Well, thank you.